Greetings friends, David Marks here with a video tutorial for the Mac users out there who want to know how to copy images from the Apple Photos app into Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic. Now, you would think that copying images from Apple's native Photos app into Lightroom Classic would be easy, but sadly, getting a copy of the photos from the Apple Photos app on your computer into Lightroom Classic is full of secrets. There are so many twists to this process that I have divided this tutorial up into four distinct sections so that I can teach you additional tricks for each increasingly complex scenario. Well, without further ado, let's get started. For our first scenario today, let's say that you have a couple of images that you love here inside of the Apple Photos app. And let's say that you only want to bring a copy of a couple of specific files over to Lightroom Classic. For our first pass, let's say that we are not interested in bringing over our entire Apple Photos library at this time. And to keep things as simple as possible here, let's say for now, all that I want is a high resolution copy of my finished image from Photos that I can then import into my Lightroom catalog. So now that we've established our expectations for this scenario, I have good news for you. This one is pretty easy. All that I need to do here is to select the images that I want, and then I'm going to go File, Export. When this flyout menu appears, I'm going to choose the top choice rather than the one that says Export the Unmodified Photo. Next, when this menu appears, I'm going to set the photo kind to TIFF. I'm going to enable the 16-bit option. Then I'm going to set the color space to Adobe RGB. I'll set the size here to full size and I'll enable these two switches. I'm setting things up this way so that we will get the very best copy possible out of the Apple Photos app, regardless of our image's original capture format. When I tap on the Export button, Apple Photos will ask me where I want to put my new images. For this demo, a temporary folder on my computer's desktop will work just fine. Any folder on your computer's desktop or on any other hard drive will work for our exported files throughout today's tutorial, because the very next thing that we are going to do is to jump into Lightroom and import all these new images. To do that, I'm going to switch over to my Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic catalog. Once in Lightroom, I need to tap on the Import button down here in the lower left corner of the library module. When the Import dialog appears, I need to lead Lightroom over to that temporary folder that I created on my desktop. And now I'm going to click down here to load up all the settings that I've stored inside of my Move Existing Photos import preset. Now look, if you've not built an import preset like this one, or if the beauty of using import presets is a new concept for you, then I urge you to watch my in-depth tutorials on this essential feature before you go any further. I know that import presets are not exciting stuff. But trust me, neglecting to use this important feature will only make your Lightroom life more difficult. Since I am sure that many of you have listened to me rant on and on about why you need to use import presets for years, I'm going to skip over all of that and just tap on the import button down here to bring in my new images. And bam, now my favorite photos from Apple Photos are here inside of Lightroom. That was pretty easy. Too easy, I'm afraid, for many of you, which brings us to scenario number two. This time, I'm going to switch back over to Apple Photos and give myself a new scenario. This time, let's say that I've worked on a couple of these images using the edit tools inside of Apple Photos. Just to demo, I'm going to select this image, for example, and then I'm going to hop into Photos Editing Module using the Enter key on my keyboard. In here, I'm going to tap on the Reset Adjustments button at the bottom so that you can see what this image looked like straight out of my camera. As a Lightroom expert, you might think that I would bash Apple Photos, but the truth is that its editing tools are actually pretty powerful, especially since this utility is free for all Mac users. Anyway, let's say that I'm happy with the work that I had already done to this image, so I'm going to restore all of those changes using the keyboard shortcut for Edit Undo. And now I'm going to go back out of the edit module. This time, what I really want is to bring over a copy of my edited file, what you see on the screen right now, plus a copy of my unmodified original capture. In this scenario, I'm going to need to export two files. Like last time, I'm going to need a full resolution TIFF to preserve the work that I've already done to this image. And I'm going to need a separate copy of this photo 
in its original unmodified file format. Well, to achieve this goal, I need to select all of the images that I want, and then I'm going to go File, Export again. For the edited version, I'm going to use the exact same settings that we used last time. I can use that same temp folder, and once this export ends, I'm going to go File, Export a second time, only this time, I'm going to choose the Export Unmodified Original for Two Photos option. When this box appears, I'm going to enable the Export IPTC as XMP Preference Switch so that my original images will retain their capture information in a format that Lightroom can read. By original capture information, I mean things like the f-stop and shutter speed that I used when I created these images. I don't need to make any other changes in this box. And when I tap on the export button, I can guide this one to that same temp folder that I already created on my desktop. From here, the import process into Lightroom is no different than what I used in the previous scenario. All I have to do at this point is to jump into Lightroom. Then I'll tap on the import button again. I'll guide it back to that folder on my desktop. I'll select the appropriate import preset, and then I'll tap import. And bam, once again, we're done. As you can see here, this time, we have a high-res TIFF file that contains my Apple photo edit, plus a copy of my original capture sitting side by side. That wasn't too hard either. So now, let's get right into scenario number three. For our third scenario, let's say that I want to bring over a copy of everything all of my images at once from Apple Photos to Lightroom. And to keep things as simple as possible this time, let's say that I don't care about preserving any of the work that I did in Apple Photos. Now, one way that you could send a copy of everything from Photos over to Lightroom would be to select all of your photos and then to use that export command again. Exporting a copy of all of your images works fine. And it's a very valid option if you have lots of keywords or descriptions here in Apple Photos that you want to preserve. But exporting thousands of images from one program and then importing them into the other is really slow and it's unnecessary if you've never bothered with keywords and the like here in Apple Photos. So rather than exporting everything, let me show you a powerful little trick. Before I can show you this trick though, we need to pause for a second and check on an important setting inside of the Apple Photos Preference menu. To get to the Preferences menu, I'm gonna go up to the word Photos on the top of the screen and then down to Preferences. In here, we need to click on the iCloud tab and double check that your images are indeed being stored inside of this computer. If you have never enabled this iCloud photo library option, then you don't need to worry about this step. Likewise, if you currently have this one configured so that all of your photos are being downloaded to this computer, then you are all set. But if you are someone who set things up in here so that the optimized Mac storage choice was turned on, then the trick that I'm about to show might not work for you. For this trick to work, we need to make sure that all of your original images are indeed inside of this computer. One more small warning. If you currently have this switch set to the Optimize Mac Storage option, and if you change things around at this point, then expect to wait a while as your original images are being downloaded from iCloud servers before proceeding with the next steps. Anyway, since I already have things set up so that all of my images are indeed inside of this computer, I'm going to tap on the General button. In here, I'm going to use this Show in Finder button to reveal the location of this Apple Photos library. Next, I'm going to close out of Apple Photos, but I want to keep this new Finder window open. Okay. So here's the big secret. The secret is that Apple Photos uses a hidden set of folders to store all of your individual images. As long as your photos are being stored inside of your Apple's photo library on this computer, then they actually are right here inside of this .photo libraries file. This package, this has your images in it, but Lightroom cannot directly open this package up and see all those photos but there is a strange and simple workaround. All that you need to do is to right click here on your photos library 
and then choose the Make Alias option. Don't change the name of this alias or move it anywhere. Just create an alias for your photos library and then hop back into Lightroom Classic. Once you're back in Lightroom, bring up the Import dialog again. Now, things can get a little tricky this time. What we need to do here is to navigate to whatever folder contains that alias using the source panel on the left side of the import dialog. Generally, you'll find that alias under your user account, under the pictures folder, and there it is. Once you find it, I want to click on this tiny little triangle just to the left of the words photo library alias to reveal all of its subfolders. Once the subfolders expand, I want to click on the one that says Masters. Next, I want to check up at the top that the Include Subfolders option is active. And then I want to use an import template that will copy all of these files into my Photos Go Here folder. Let me stress that copy is the behavior that we want to use this time. We want to use copy because if you tell Lightroom to move anything out of this masters folder, then when you go back to Apple Photos, things will be really wonky. Since everything looks good to me in here now, I'm going to tap on the import button. And just like that, I now have a copy of all of my original unmodified images here inside of Lightroom Classic. Now, that wasn't the most straightforward procedure, but if you're careful, then it's nothing you can't handle. Okay, ready for one more wrinkle? So here we go with scenario number four. This time, let's say that you want everything we did in the last demo. To be clear, let's say this time that you want to start out by importing all of your original unmodified images from Apple Photos into Lightroom. But this time, let's say that you also want to bring over a full resolution copy of all of the images that you've ever edited with Apple Photos too. Well, fortunately, the first part of this scenario is exactly the same as what we did last time. Part one is to use the exact same steps with that alias trick, just like the last demo. After that though, you need to hop back into Apple Photos. And now we have to briefly discuss a rarely used feature here inside of Photos called Smart Album. We need to use this Smart Albums feature so that Apple Photos can gather up all of the images that we have ever edited for us. I'm emphasizing the need for a Smart Album here because tracking down each and every image that you ever edited in Photos one by one would be way too tedious. So to make a new Smart Album, I'm going to go up to the word File on the menu bar and then down to the Smart Album feature. When this dialog box appears, I can name the Smart Album Edit Images or whatever I want. The name that you give this Smart Album really doesn't matter. What matters though are its search criteria. Down here, I need to set these controls so that they say Photo is Edited. And then I can hit OK. Now, Photos will create a Smart Album for us with this gear icon and will automatically gather up everything that I've ever worked on. This is great because now all that I have to do is to export a copy of all of these images using the exact same settings that we started with back in the very beginning of this tutorial. To do that, I can go File Export for the last time. Once again, I'll use the TIFF file format with all of the same settings that you see here. And once again, I can send these images over to a temporary folder on my desktop. Once they have exported, I can hop back into Lightroom one more time. Back in Lightroom, I'm going to bring up the import dialog once again. Now I'm going to guide it back to my desktop. And then I'm going to set the copy versus move options back to move. I'll double check that all of my import settings look good, and when everything is correct, I'll tap on the import button once more. When Lightroom is done bringing these files in, 
I'm going to right click on one of these. I'll pick this one here. And then I'll use the go to folder in library command to show you what we've accomplished. In here, we now have my unmodified raw file sitting side by side with the full resolution TIFF file that stores all of my Apple photo edits. Getting here was not painless, but the results are worth the effort if what you really want is a copy of all your originals plus all of your edits. Let me just add one more suggestion before I sign off. If you are going to go to all this length to bring absolutely everything over, then you might also want to go pair by pair to sync the keywords from your TIFF files over to your unmodified RAWs. If I select this TIFF file, for example, then you can see that it contains keywords. But if I click on my original RAW file, it does not. Sadly, in this context, unmodified original means devoid of everything, including keywords, even if I type those in on this photo back in Apple Photos. So to fix that, I have to select both files. I need to make sure that the one with the keywords, the TIFF file, is the most selected. Then I can use Lightroom's Sync Metadata button down here in the lower right to make sure that stuff like my GPS coordinates and my keywords will be copied from this photo over to the other one. Once I have check marks on the right fields, I can tap Synchronize, and now even this RAW file has my keywords. This last step was easy, but obviously doing this for thousands of image pairs would be a pain, which sadly brings us to the low point of this tutorial. Unfortunately, there is no fast and efficient way to carry over all of your work from Apple Photos to Lightroom Classic. Even if we do our very best, like we have in this scenario, there are some Apple Photos specific features like favorites, albums, and projects that will not survive the transition. We can do a lot, but we can't get everything from one program into the other because ultimately Adobe and Apple are competitors in the photo organizing kingdom and neither want to tell the other all of their secrets. Still, most everything is better than nothing. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you learned something today, then please hit the subscribe button and leave us a like or a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in our next tutorial.